Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Hillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And today I am starting a YouTube war, although you'll just see it on my channel because my opponent uh, doesn't have a YouTube channel. Uh, so you're just going to see my turns, uh, but I'll go over uh, each round and let you know what happened. And uh, my opponent is a buddy that I've had for over 30 years now, and he's probably one of the smartest guys I know. And I know he's listening to this, so that means I don't owe you 10 bucks anymore because I gave you, you know, uh, props. Anyway, uh, no, he's a pretty smart guy, and he uh, he uh, hasn't played uh, some of the newer versions of all this, but he does know Global 4 very well. Now, I'm still having to look up rules because I have all these other rules in my head from BBR and from 39 and 36, and I have to, okay, what's going on again? So as you can see, I've got all of my combats ready to go. And uh, if the dice are willing, it should be a successful round. Just waiting to see if he's going to scramble or not to these attacks. So I kind of went in with everything I possibly could. And you can see I've got lots of planes here. And you're thinking, well, how can they land there? Well, because my build is that. So I'm just going to hopefully be able to take out his navy a little bit more easily and retain more of my aircraft uh, in the process. I'm going to do the ping pong attack here in Yugoslavia. And of course, we're going to take Finland and Bulgaria as a couple of freebies and uh, move along. France, the totality of France will have to wait till next round. But there we are, folks. This is, this is reaching way back for me. I have not had these boards out on my table probably since my son was in high school so and before that actually so probably five or six maybe seven years since these boards have been on my table that I recall uh, maybe I have but I think when I started playing more G40 I got into BBR and uh, once I bought the map I didn't use these anymore I was using the BBR versions so here we are well wish me luck folks I'm going up against a genius and uh, we all know how the dice feel about Hilltop Pillbox, but we're going to hopefully make that change in the coming days and weeks. We're hoping to get, uh, hopefully going to get at least one video out per week on this game. Might be a bit more, especially in the early going. Uh, it's going to be running on my time because the Axis, as you know, kind of monopolized the first couple of rounds till America gets well and truly joined into the war. So... Here we go, round one. We're coming after Paris. There's 12 units there. I'm coming at them with 20. No aircraft, because any aircraft hates me. All right, well, in the hubbub of doing a game via uh, sending uh, videos back and forth via Wii Transfer, I totally forgot to do a round one wrap up. So here we are. We're just at the end of Japan's second round, second turn. And I'm going to show you what the map looks like. Uh, I did do a J1, and I've got most of my notes from that. Uh, well, the, J, the first turn, actually, I got all my notes and pretty much all the second round from The Good Captain. So head on over to The Good Captain. Check out his channel. He is He's one of these brain guys, right? He's math, math for him is like breathing for the rest of us. Um, and so he, uh, he works the odds, and he checks all these sort of things out and makes sure that you know, got a good chance of winning these battles and whatnot, and then he plans accordingly. And, uh, yeah, although my J1 had a, a, a near fatal blow dealt to it, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so the Americans have uh, got their uh, little fleet out here. Isn't that cute? Uh, because in the Carolines, I have that. Now, again, this is at the end of J2, so the Americans are just going to be doing their turn later today. And getting that info to me, the Americans brought a sub and a couple of fighters from Hawaii down here to 54. And not really sure what's going on here. Probably he, I was stationed in the Philippines with most of this fleet. And he probably just wanted to avoid getting schmacked, so he, uh, he backed everybody up. But then I went on the uh, little rampage here in the south. Lost a couple guys in uh, Malaya. Um, but took all this stuff, built a factory here. The little difference I did in J2 is I put the air base in uh, Quang C instead of French Indochina. <clears throat> and it's um, 
for me, it was just I had a bit of a better reach north. Not one, just one space, but a little bit better reach going north. Um, yeah, that's about it. But I could still get to Calcutta and uh, hammer on Calcutta should I want to invade. And I can bring in eight ground units and a bunch of planes. Now, you might say, hey, your planes look a little light. Yes, they are, because in the first battle for Yunnan, I went in with four ground units and a bunch of aircraft. Well, actually, just two aircraft, a fighter and a tactical that came from Kiangsu. And guess what? The Chinese rolled. Well, actually, I was doing the rolling. <laughs> four hits. So I had to lose three infantry, and I lost uh, the fighter, I think. And then I rolled, and I got a hit, and he got another hit. So he went five for five on dice at twos. And I should, shouldn't say he, because I was rolling for him. So I ended up losing two planes in Yunnan. But I needed that one dollar to make sure that the J2, I could build what I wanted to build, which was, of course, the Hainan Naval Port, the Air Base, and the factory here. Uh, everything else, pretty typical, pretty standard fare here. Uh, Chinese have backed up and will continue to do so. They do not want to get caught in the open because that will be it for them. The Russians backed everybody off, and then he's made a little adjustment and he came back. And uh, so he might be wanting to demonstrate a little bit here. We'll keep an eye on him and see what he does. It's, it's one of those things where, you know what, I don't even mind if he keeps these guys here because uh, Germany's going to be coming towards Moscow. And if that's, you know, 17, 18, well, about 17 guys less that I have to fight, that's, uh, that's all right by me. But we'll see. My opponent is a smart guy. Uh, so that's Japan right now. They did all right. And after one turn, this is what Calcutta looks like. Kind of emptied out a bunch of stuff there. Brought a bunch of stuff over here. Uh, the Italians came down to Kenya. The South Africans are marching up. And he basically opened up Cairo. Uh, he pulled everybody out. So Italy could have come here and taken out Cairo. There's you know, no two ways about it. <clears throat> but, he only left one guy in Alexandria, so I wanted to kill that, of course. But if I had come into Cairo, I'd have my Italian fleet sitting here. He's got a cruiser that can make it from here. And he's got two planes that could make it from here, plus the bomber. Plus the two planes on the carrier, because he could bring the carrier up for the other planes to land on, of course. He has to be able to provide a spot for them. Um, and he could have wiped out my Italian Navy. And we all know what happens to Italy when their Navy is no more. So I decided to just build a destroyer, take Yugoslavia, which had been weakened by the Germans, and uh, just kind of be a little bit, a little bit, mm, I won't say mundane, but uh, a little, little bit safer with Italy. I didn't try and attack with these guys here. That rarely works for me but uh, they won't get overrun anytime soon. Uh, over here, the Americans landed a man and a tank in Gibraltar. <clears throat> there is a modest fleet building here because the French skedaddled, because again, I didn't want to bite off more than Italy could chew in the first round, so they just left. And of course, left a cruiser here. Now we'll see what they do in, in round two. They might bring everybody in. I doubt it, because now my Italian fleet is even a little bit stronger and I've got some air power with some legs. So that's the fleet there. Uh, the Soviets brought down their sub. Brought my subs over here, sank the Canadian destroyer and transport, of course. And then in my non-com in the next move, I skedaddle up there because the Americans built a destroyer on round one. So there's a destroyer here, and there's a, a destroyer here. Neither of them could reach me in... or the, This one cannot reach me, but this one can. But then he's going to be way out of position. And very sinkable from my German fleet. So I've put a little bit of money into the German fleet. I lost my battleship in the English Channel. And uh, part of me wishes I hadn't uh, put it into the battle, but... Um, if I hadn't, he probably would have scrambled and then I might not have won the battle. And he'd have a battleship sitting in the English Channel. So, it was unfortunate. 
Um, but now we we own the North Atlantic right now, and this whole fleet can make it down to 91 here and put a dirty beating on anybody who uh, gets in the way. Because I've got uh, the three subs, and I've got some air power, two cruisers, and a destroyer. And uh, should be able to have some fun with that. And what else? What else? What else? Yeah, just building up. Built up uh, some tanks and uh, got some big stack of infantry going on here. He built nothing but infantry on round one, nothing but artillery on round two. So he is uh, gearing up for a good defense with a little bit of counter. I suspect next round we'll be seeing some tanks. Um, I've just put a little reminder move my Bulgarians up if Greece doesn't get activated. If it doesn't get activated, then the Italians will attack at this turn, adding a couple bucks to their coffers, and something they should be able to defend. Um, this is the British transport, came down from Liverpool. It's skedaddled after its destroyer got lost in the Battle for 110, um, when it came in on the British turn. And the Americans have brought, they got both their bombers here. So it looks like they're going to be coming over to start to put the hurt on Brit or German industry. Um, I'm going to be building up in Paris three infantry a turn. That's just going to be a thing I'm going to do. So by the time they land, I should have 15 to 20 infantry uh, right there ready to uh, smack them. And I'm going to be building some fast units in Germany and West Germany as well. And more infantry. I'm going to go big on infantry because my goal in this game uh, likely won't be to get into Moscow. Because um, I, I think that's a fool's errand in this game. Unless you go full Moscow. And at which point you're giving up. France, right? You're just, you're giving it up. You're giving up the Atlantic. They're going to be building transports and fleets out here, and then you're screwed. So I'm trying to dictate a little bit of naval presence in the Atlantic, and we'll see what my opponent does about that. He certainly has the Mediterranean uh, in a position where he could, he could really throw down here this next turn um, and bring a whole bunch of aircraft maybe to Malta, um, you know, coagulate his fleet here, fleet here in 98 and kind of, you know, uh, try to coerce me to come and fight. Uh, but we shall see. That is pretty much where we are. Not much else to say. So that's, again, just at the end of the J2. And apologize for not getting the whole J1 and uh, G1 done. France battle, lost all my infantry and a couple of mechs. And besides this Yunnan disaster, the Japanese did okay. We lost a couple things in the Philippines and a couple things in Malaya. You know, pretty standard stuff. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. Hopefully this will give the American fleet a moment of pause. And I like the Caroline Islands and the Philippines and Hainan. They all have naval bases, as does this here, as of course does Japan as does down here in 37. So I've got a lot of mobility, so I'm going to be putting more and more money into fleet uh, as we go. And if I can keep the Americans at bay and keep the Anzacians kind of holed up in the corner here, I think Japan should be able to run the table uh, over here in Calcutta. Again, really depends on how he wants to pursue it. But if we look at the money right now, this is where everybody is. So I've already got uh, UK Pacific down to six bucks, same with China, and then Anzacs at 10. The Italians are also, oh, Italians should be up. I forgot to move them up. Italians are at 13 right now. Um, like that's definitely gonna drop um, marginally as they lose Ethiopia this turn and possibly lose Kenya as well. And then the British 29, UK, that's UK Europe, I guess. Soviets, of course, at 37, Germany's 42, Japan at 47, and America at 50 after losing the Philippines. All right, so that is a lot of information. We'll let you know how the rest of this turn goes after we uh, get our Italians and the Frenchmen done. Should be fun. Stay tuned.
All right, so round four is about to begin, and if you're watching this, it means it's probably the last thing on this video, and next week I'll be doing a few more, but uh, the guy I'm playing actually lives in Saskatchewan, and we're going to be getting together in Alberta next week to do our annual Gamers uh, Weekend with uh, three other fellows we've been doing since 1998, so anyway, I'm going to give you a little update here. So, he built uh, five... Strat Bombers here on the west coast and moved out his stuff out to here. So he's got two battle wagons, uh, ostensibly three loaded carriers. He didn't move the planes onto the uh, carrier, the Yorktown, but uh, they can scramble. So that's that. Got a couple cruisers and a couple destroyers and of course the transports. Now up here I have I built uh, was it five subs and a destroyer thinking hey I'll take a poke at Hawaii but this is just too much I think that would just be a fool's errand and he knows it so I'm, I was I was thinking maybe this turn I might but uh, I'm going to continue to bulk up the fleet a little bit uh, Anzac lots and lots of stuff in Queensland they built three guys but they have a lot of money they have seven left at the end of this so they have uh, they're doing all right for cash um, I think they got 17 or something right now. And uh, over here, been able to grab most of the money islands. Java remains unfettered by any sort of colonialism by anybody, except, I guess, except the Dutch, but they're not doing so hot right now. Uh, French Indochina, shiny factory, cranked out a man artillery and a transport this round. Be able to sink the American sub, so we traded a just uh, transport for his sub. I guess I could take my non con. I really wanted to remember to do that because he's brought the Soviets back right here and it can obviously crush all these guys here if he wants to forego the Mongolian rule. I don't know if he really wants to do that, but he may. China, fairly typical stuff. Uh, everything's been moved back. And uh, here we are. This is what we got. So on Japan's next turn, not even really sure what to do. I will likely take Sikang, just so then I have a doorway into the Soviet Union, uh, but also knocks him down to two bucks, so that'll be less than a guy a turn that he'll be putting on until he decides to attack, uh, come on out and attack, and then by then I should have another factory, Kang Su, and start pumping out some stuff from there. I will also have Calcutta because he has done the classic everybody retreats out of Calcutta, live to fight another day, and uh, will likely... Um, I'm not sure what he's going to do with all this stuff, actually. We'll have to wait and see what his designs are, but obviously I can take all these guys, put them in India, and I can load up these transports and bring them on uh, a little closer. Um, can't use the Air Force in West India, just a little too far, but we'll once we take India, I just might bring everybody in there and secure it. I will be using, of course, a transport to take Java, and that'll get me the bonus for that. I'll have the bonus for Calcutta. So I'll be making some pretty decent scratch with the Japanese. Now, we did have one of those battles that makes you go... This is like that one shot in golf that brings you back. You know, you have 100 bad ones, and then you have a great one that brings you back. Right? Yeah. So I had that in Cairo. Yeah. I had probably the best dice I've had, and I'd like to say in my life, uh, but probably just because it was just a shock. So I had 16 dice, including uh, a bomber and uh, a battleship bombard and two cruiser bombards and two fighters and a tank. So I had two at four and six at three and um, then I had uh, four at two and four at one. None of the ones hit but out of the other 12 dice I got 10 hits and that took out well he had 14 units there and so I killed 10 of his units on round one and then round two of course that was it. Um, and I filmed it, fortunately, because we haven't really been filming a lot of these battles. We're just going on trust. But I thought, you know, I'm going to film this because this is for posterity. And I actually won the bloody thing. So 
what he's got left in Africa for ground forces for the British is one guy. That is it. So they will not be taking Cairo back anytime soon. The Italian fleet is intact. It's not very impressive, mind you. It's a battleship, two cruisers, two destroyers. And then a sub that was on convoy duty that missed. He rolled two fours for that, so I didn't get anything. Um, but uh, the loss of Cairo is, is pretty big for me in that it keeps the British Navy out of the med for another turn. Out of this side, anyway. And it's less likely that the Americans are going to venture in now knowing that they're the only game in town. They, you know, There's one British transport that could pick up a man and a tank, but really not enough to dislodge uh, anything here out of Cairo. So Cairo will likely be held for a couple of rounds. I'm going to have to go back and pick up some boys and bring them home. Uh, I may actually build a factory here. If I can build a factory and hold it, that could be big problems for the British. So, uh, he does have a lot of air power though, right? Like he's got these uh, here. He's also got a fighter in West India. And he's still got, you know, scads of fighters and a strat bomber up here. And, yeah, that's where we are right now. I was demonstrating for a sea lion, so that's why he's brought everything back. Now my sea lion would consist of four transport, well five transports, and five men, five artillery, and my air plus one two cruiser bombards. Uh, yeah, I'm not going after all that. Um, it is tempting, but there's a I don't know if you can see, but there's a red chip under there. So he's got like 14, 15 infantry alone. Um, so I have a feeling I wouldn't even get into his aircraft before I'd have to retreat. So that's off the table. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I could land in Scotland, which might not be as bad an idea. Just land 10 units in Scotland and just, hey, you know, come at me. But would my fleet survive? So again, this is my fleet. And remember, he can only attack my surface vessel. So I have a destroyer, two cruisers, and a loaded carrier. Well, he can bring with the British, which would be the, the guys who would attack, uh, a strat bomber and five fighters. Um, plus, well, if I'm in 111, he can't actually get to me. So I might even do that and then build up some more fleet here in 112 and under cover of scramble and then come in there. The other idea I had, and I'm telling you this because by the time you see this, it will have happened one way or the other. So I can either go to Scotland, thereby not declaring war on the Soviet Union. Because if I declare war on the Soviet Union, well, I don't think I can load that transport. Of course, if subs don't make sea zones hostile, maybe I can. I'm going to have to look up the rules on that. But then I was thinking, hey, just come north, and I could land all these boys up in Nenetsia. Now, I wouldn't land an Archangel or Novgorod, because he's got a stack of... Oh, let's see, 37 <laughs> infantry. He does have some fast movers as well, and he's got his air power. So even if I landed eight units, which is all I could bring, that would force him to turn around a little bit of this power and do something about it. Meanwhile, I could come in here in the south and do some damage. Had I known I was going to win this, I may have actually done a little can opener with the Italians on eastern Poland and then moved all the armor through to western Ukraine because you can't get to them with that big fat stack of meat shields. So that could have caused him problems because then I would have, uh, let's see, seven armor and, you know, likely, you know, there's 14 units there. So like 12 to 14 units plus almost 20 units in the south here. Uh, threatening Ukraine. So that would have been fun, but I didn't do the can opener, so I can't can't do that. Best I can do is just go into Bessarabia. Don't really want to go into eastern Poland and stir up the hornet's nest, but my next German build is definitely going to be ground units and uh, probably lots of mech so I can move quickly to move faster than his big slow stack of humans there. Uh, but the Americans, putting all their, their hopes, I guess, at this point, 
really on the Pacific. So I'm going to have to be very careful with Japan, as good as uh, they seem to be doing here. I don't want to get stuck in some sort of a slugging match here. Now, my the good thing for me is he didn't build anything here. Um, and he's he put these two things, or he built a sub. He built a sub here. So I've got a destroyer here, but it can't reach. So he'd get a... Uh, sneak attack as it were, or he's there in order to try to convoy. But by then my destroyer should be over there. All right, well this is a very interesting game. Again, uh, I didn't have much hope when he had a, a lock, he had 14 units there in Egypt. I didn't, uh, didn't hold a lot of hope out for Italy being relevant, but they collected 25 last round. And uh, I, built, <laughs> I built six men with my 18 bucks because I figured this is going to fail. I'm going to have to turtle. Um, but surprisingly, it did okay. So part of me wishes I wouldn't have built all the men. But at the same point now, that's uh, he's not going to be able to crack crack into that uh, very, very easily anyway. All right. So hopefully you're enjoying the game. And we will let you know how we proceed with things on turn four in the next video. So stay tuned. Should be fun. I wonder what this is going to turn out looking like.